When it comes to formatting strings, there are different ways you can do that, but which one should you use? In today's video, I'm going to share with you three ways of doing that. So I'm going to start with this way. All right. So this is actually the first version. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because it's actually quite outdated and it had problems and stuff like that, especially when it comes to displaying tuples, dictionaries, etc. So I'm just going to show you real quick. So let's say we've got a few strings. So the name. All right. And then number. All right. Let's use this so we can actually recognize. That. Get the space. All right. So we are actually going to use this character as a sort of placeholder, followed by a letter. It could be D, it could be S, etc. So let's have a look. So I'm going to print my name is. Then this S, which stands for string, is my number is. D. Then I need to place character and then name surname number. All right. As you can see, they need to be in order. So this is the first one and this is the first one. This is the second one and this is the second one, and so on and so forth. So here I could have used S, okay, as we did here and here. The only difference is that. S actually converts any Python object using str, you know, the string constructor. That means that it's going to return 149.5, all right? If we were to use D, which stands for decimal, it will actually sort of convert it to integer. So in this case, it would be 149 without this, all right? We can actually try that out. So let's have a look the terminal so python as you can see now is 149 i use s save it and run it again 149.5 which is actually a string here and this is sort of integer perfect let's get this up and pull it down so this is actually an old way of doing things so you shouldn't really use this anymore let's go ahead and have a look at the other methods all right so I'll print a line and then I'm gonna print which is the other way so this is actually a method of the string object and it was introduced in Python 2.6 and it's a little upgrade of the first way above. So let's have a look at how it works. I'll print my name is, and then I have to write a sort of placeholder or replacement field. Then my surname is again. Then my number is like that. All right. Then dot after the string format and then as we did above name surname and number this works exactly the same i'm just going to show you other things before running it we could actually change the order of all the things by doing this so i'm just going to do that so if you reference the index of these variables you can actually change the order. So one, zero, two. So zero is this one, one, this, two, this, because it's sort of a list, all right? So this is one way you can do things. You could actually also use the same value multiple times. So you could do something like, like this, like my name again is, no, 
like that. So let's actually fix this. Now do this and do that. All right. So let's actually try to run this and see what we got. So let's see. So my name is Fabio. My surname is Mirani. Blah blah blah. Then my name is Mirani because we actually here we change the order. Here is my name, and here we repeated the same, right? Fabio, my name again is Fabio, etc., etc. So this is actually working. Perfect. Another thing you can do is actually you can use keywords arguments, and then you can reference them by name. So, for example, I'm actually going to copy this again. All right, add a little space here. So here you could do like something like, I don't know, name equal Fabio, surname equal Mazzani, and then number equal dot five, and then you can do the following. So here, name, surname, and number all right perfect so let's try to run that and see if it works all right so perfect the really interesting thing about that is that you could actually use the dictionary unpacking so let's say that you've got i don't know like dog right and then you've got Name as key, then Charlie as value, and then you know age ten. All right. Then you want to print those things. So I'm gonna write print the name of the dog is name like that, and it is. Age is yes, old uh, format, and then unpack the dictionary. This is exactly the same as doing this. It's exactly the same. So. Charlie, and then age 10. So basically, when you do this and you use this syntax, under the hood, it's like doing this. So passing the key value pairs, but you're doing that with the dictionary unpacking, which is quite useful. I mean, if you know there's a name, you know there's an age, stuff like that, you could actually like write something like that instead of having to put all the variables in here, which could, you know, become quite messy. So this is quite a useful feature and, you know, it's quite interesting. So I wanted to mention that. So we could actually try to run this and see if it works. So Python, string formatting, let's have a look. All right, the name of the dog is Charlie and it is 10 years old. And the dog is Charlie and it is 10 years old. So it's exactly the same, right? Perfect. Keep in mind that you could actually do that. So this is better than the first one. It works fine with dictionaries and stuff like that. And it's fine when it comes to a low number of arguments and things like that. But, but the code could become a bit messy if we had a lot of arguments and stuff like that. So this leads me to the best and more recent way of formatting strings, which is a formatted string literal or F string that was introduced in Python 3.6. So it's quite recent. So let's have a look at how it works. So I'm gonna write strings, perfect. So let's actually add a name, 
you know, just to change things up. Selena, another surname. Go, yeah. Another number. I mean, I could have used the same variables, but just to change things up a little bit. So, what do we have to do to actually make an F string? We just have to add an F before the string. So, for example, F, like that. So, this is actually an F string. So, I am, then replacement field, and inside here, you can actually use the variable straight away, which is amazing, right? My surname is another, another surname, and my favorite number is another number. All right. So this is exactly the same as we did above, but it's gonna make things so much easier, especially when you've got loads of variables and stuff. You just need to actually write the replacement field with the variable inside. So this is really, really amazing. Inside a replacement field, you could even use methods, functions, etc., etc. So for example, I don't know, you could do something like f, Let's actually copy the whole string here. We actually do like something like, I don't know, lower, all right, which is a strings method. So let's actually have a look. I am Selena, my surname is Doe, and my favorite number is that. As you can see, Selena is all lowercase now. Another thing that is really interesting is that you can actually call a function in here. So just, I don't have the function, but you know, you could do like my, my function and you call the function and then the returned value is gonna be printed. All right, so let's go back to another name. Of course, with strings, make sure you use the right quotation marks. So if you need to use Let's say a double quotation mark inside, use a single for the string and vice versa, etc. etc. But this is just a side note. Okay, so I guess we can actually end it here. Go and have a look at the documentation to learn more about the things that I've explained. Now I'm gonna close everything as usual, and that's it.